Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I wanted to do a quick follow-up on my series of videos over the last couple days concerning the drop calculator. And I want to bring up a couple of points that arose in the comments to those videos, both on TikTok and over on YouTube. I want to use them as an example of a healthy set of communications between science-minded individuals that are adults when they have a disagreement about something related to science. So, let's go ahead and have a look. Now first, let's go over the problem and then my approach to the problem. Now, if we have two individuals, one at A and one at B, on the surface of a sphere of radius R, the question becomes is how do we measure the drop between the horizontal at A to position B? In other words, this distance right here. Now the approach that I used was I said that this side right here equals the radius times sine of angle beta. So the equation would become radius minus radius sine beta. And since radius is in both terms, we could pull that out and we get radius times one minus the sine of beta. Now in mathematics, there are generally more than one path to the same truth. Why did I choose this path? Well, it was purely for aesthetic reasons. Let me show you. So it should be pretty obvious from this diagram, if this is the radius of the sphere and we want to measure this drop, we can subtract this length right here of this triangle from the radius to get the drop. And that's what I did right here. Now I chose that because the radius is here and I was measuring the drop out here. It kind of spread the diagram out a little bit and it's kind of intuitive. We're measuring the drop here, why not show this segment of this triangle here. Now, some people suggested that there was a different formula for it, and uh, some of them even called it, quote unquote, the correct formula. And that's something that you may see in many videos. Well, what exactly is that? Well, here's angle alpha. This is a right angle right here. So the drop would be the radius minus this segment right here. And this segment's length is r times the cosine of alpha. Now the reason I didn't choose that approach was I felt that everything was smashed up in the middle of the circle and I just thought it was a little clearer and a little more intuitive to do it off to the side. But let's have a look at a couple of triangles. So let's have a look at this first triangle right here with angle alpha. Well, as you may recall, angle alpha was the distance in degrees from person A down to person B along the surface of the sphere. And we said that angle beta down here was 90 degrees minus angle alpha because this is a right angle. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at something. Here's another right angle right here. What do you think this angle right here would be? A triangle has 180 degrees in it. That's 90. That means that angle beta and this angle have got to add up to 90 degrees. Notice over here that we have a right angle as well and angle beta and angle alpha add up to 90 degrees. So it would follow that that is angle alpha. And since this is a 90 degree angle as well, and this angle is 90 degrees minus angle alpha, that means that this is also angle beta. Now let's go ahead and compare the two triangles. I wonder what we'll find. So what we have here is first we have a rectangle with a diagonal line of length r. These are all 90 degree angles. Each of these triangles has an angle alpha and an angle beta. These are what are called similar triangles. They're mirror images of each other. They're the same triangle. The other thing that's very important is the length of this side equals the length of that side. For angle beta, this side is radius times sine, and this is radius times cosine the adjacent side. For angle alpha, the opposite side, so this is radius times the sine of alpha. The adjacent side is radius times the cosine of alpha. Now one other thing that's very important to know is the relationship between sine and cosine. The sine of angle alpha equals the cosine of 90 degrees minus the angle alpha. So angle beta is 90 degrees minus alpha. So the cosine would be 90 degrees minus alpha. So that is the cosine of angle beta. When I say that the drop is the radius times one minus the sine of beta, I'm talking about this segment right here. When they say drop is radius times one minus the cosine of alpha, they're talking about that side right there. Both those sides are exactly the same length. We're talking about the same thing. 
The only difference is, is the diagram. I just chose to approach it a slightly different way than they did. I added an extra step, but I thought it added a little extra clarity. Now, here's one of the comments I got over on YouTube concerning the uh, video that I did that combined all three TikTok videos. Now, this gentleman pointed out a slightly different formula, which is more along the uh, cosine approach. Now, one thing I noticed, he talked about the drop being 12.4 centimeters per kilometer squared. Now, when I did my math, I got 7.8 centimeters per kilometer squared. There's quite a difference there. So look at my reply. Now, my first reply is, well, I think we're talking about the same thing. And as you know, there's more than one path to the same truth. The results are no different. And then I noticed that 12.4 centimeters. I said, I do want to double check my math for kilometers because I got something different than you got. And then I came back a little while later and I said, you know, I double checked my math. I'm right. It's 7.8 centimeters per kilometer squared, not 12.4. We start calling each other stupid and brain dead, you know, like other flat earthers. Well, no, we're adults and we're actual scientists. Uh, I do appreciate him checking my math and making sure that I did it right. And if I made an error, I certainly want to know about it. Let's go see how this turned out. Well, looky here. As it turns out, he rechecked it again and said, no, Bob, you're right. Apparently, he made a minor math error. Okay, and then my response, of course, was to call him stupid and brain dead and mock him. Nope. <laughs> I thanked him for his input, and I appreciated the chance to double check my math. And rather than double down on his mistake, which was minor, he actually admitted it. He fessed up to a mistake. That's what scientists do. They say, I was wrong. This is something that conspiratorial minds and science deniers are unable to do because they're right in their mind no matter what evidence you present to the contrary. Now I'm going to leave you with a final thought. You may say, Bob, why did you do this much effort to confirm something that the flat earthers and science deniers like to talk about? And that is the eight inches per mile drop in earth curve. Okay, well, first of all, it's a good question, and scientists have an inquiring mind and want to get to the bottom of it. I thought that people would appreciate actually going through this and getting a definitive answer. And I think that we did. The second thing is, uh, I'm hearing rumblings from the Flat Earth community that somehow Bob the Science Guy confirmed the Flat Earth by confirming 8 inches per mile squared. You keep thinking that. You just keep thinking that. Because I did this deliberately. Now you have to wonder why I did it deliberately, and you'll find out next week. This is Bob the Science Guy. Give me a follow, and you'll find out too. Take care.